Hello there and welcome to another episode of Creatives on the Couch. Now before we kick off with today's amazing episode, I just need to give a quick shout out regarding my tie. It's been sent in and given to me by an amazing guy called Anthony, who recently married his beautiful wife, Michaela. So he sent it and I did promise that I would wear it on this episode, as he is a Doctor Who fan. So I thought, why not? So there you go. Hope you have an amazing marriage, Michaela and Anthony. Now on today's episode, we have got Doctor Who royalty. And any Harry Potter fans out there, you are going to love this. He is now a cult icon regarding Whovians all over the world. It's the one and only Simon Fisher Becker. Thank you welcome, very much. Welcome, welcome. Well, what, a, what an extraordinary introduction. Are you all right? Uh, I'm very well and uh, I want to uh, wish Anthony and his and his beau a very happy marriage. Thank you Lovely. so That's much. That's all right. Now, Doctor Who, we might as well start there because mm. everyone's going to be chomping at the bit regarding that one. Are you a Doctor Who fan? Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah. Do you know who he is? I recognise you. Well, he's not blue at the I moment. I recognise you. Of course I know who you are. So how did, how did all that come about? Um, how did it all sort of start? Mm. Well, I, I simply got a phone call from Kim, my agent, who said, I've got an audition for you tomorrow and it's for Doctor Who. I didn't hear anything else because all I said to myself was, I've got this. This is my. This is mine. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm a huge Doctor Who fan. Mm. I, as a kid, I wanted to play the master, uh, but I got Dorian instead, which is a much more sophisticated character, in my opinion. Well, he's. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, as a lifelong Doctor Who fan myself, you know, the moment you kind of walked on with all that power and blue, <laughs> you kind of just controlled. All of it, didn't you? Really? I, I was very lucky uh, that uh, the character written by Stephen Moffat is perfect and he gave very simple instructions. And I always say uh, to anyone who's a writer, uh, for, uh, particularly for TV, keep your instructions very short mm. and sweet. We do not need two and a half pages <laughs> before true. you say good morning. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, he's very, it, it said set homage to Star Wars. So that gave me a good idea of what it was going to look like. Yeah. Uh, then it was Dorium, large blue man, thinks Sydney Green Street. Wow. And uh, for those who don't know Sydney Green Street, he was an English actor who went to Hollywood at the age of 61. Really? really? Yeah, he was, I oh. think he was a bank manager. I could be wrong on that, but he, he had a proper job, as people keep <laughs> insisting I should have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he retired and he went to Hollywood and he made a series of films, one of which is Casablanca, mm. where he played oh. Sonora, uh, Senor Ferrari, who was dressed in white suit okay. and wore a fez, like Matt Smith's doctor wears a fez. So I knew exactly uh, how... They wanted Doran to look. Yeah. And Sidney Greenstreet is he's a very large man and but he was still and spoke very quickly. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's that, so at the audition I just tried to keep still. And yeah. uh, had they told you at that point that you were going to be painted head to toe in emulsion? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guessed I would be because they said blue. So they did tell yeah. you. So they had already. I mean, we've yeah. got the we've got the picture there. Let's. Yes. I mean, look at that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that really is incredible, isn't it? I must admit, it wasn't until I was in the makeup, yeah. uh, uh, in makeup, and they first put the blue on that I could see that it was uh, somewhat of an iconic look. Yeah. Mm. But I had no idea what the response would be from the fans, which I I regularly thank them for my new bathroom <laughs> because <laughs> because. <laughs> Because Dora was only ever going to be one scene in one, in one episode, which okay. was, you know, I'm a Doctor Who fan, but it was disappointing, it was just that one scene. And exactly a year later, uh, Stephen Moffat brought him back, um, uh, but then I lost my head. <laughs> so I died at the end of the... Oh, uh, but did you? Everybody and, comes back in Doctor yes. Who, the master came said, back And I said, times. oh, well, that's a shame. And then they phoned again. Oh, wow, that, you did that. So. Well... What was the audition like? You know, oh, the audition was very straightforward. Basically, it was in a church. Right. Uh, and a, in a room, and it literally was the size of a broom cupboard. Okay. Uh, and there was um, Andy Pryor, the casting director, and, uh, and his assistant. And, um, you know, because nowadays uh, cameras are so tiny. Yeah. When I started out, they were still these huge things that wheeled around like hovercrafts. 
And uh, but uh, no, it was literally this thin stick with uh, something that looked like a matchbox, and that was actually the camera. Mm -hmm. And the scene that they sent me to to read was the actual scene I had in the Pandora Opens. All oh, right. With Doctor Song. Wow. I yeah. mean, the, the the episode is. It is incredible. Was it was it green screen or was it all there? I well, mean, oh. the uh, the uh, the first scene I did was down in the bowels of Cardiff in mm. a wine bar. So <laughs> that was a, again, it was a very tiny space. Yeah. And in there, they had this table. They had me, and of course, I'm massive, right? <laughs> and uh, and there's uh, <laughs> there's Alex Kingston. Who is absolutely oh, glorious and marvellous. River song. Uh, and they had extras. Mm. And they had a, a particular character had to come in and give Dorian a box. Okay. So there's that going on. Then you've got cameraman. Another camera on a dolly. Mm -hmm. There's go, You've got sound. <laughs> lighting. <laughs> the producers. And it was absolutely tiny, tiny, tiny. Mm. Uh, but no green screen. Green mm. screen didn't really come in until the next two. Okay, that was, that was with Matt Smith, wasn't it? Yes. How was he as the doctor for you? Well, he was fantastic. And uh, he was, um, well, he is actually quite a shy person until he gets to know you. Oh, right. And then, and then he's a bit cheeky. Oh, really? Particularly okay. when we were doing the Head in the Box scenes. Yes. Uh, uh, and very often, you'll know this, uh, Reese, that um, the, the lead character, when it comes to doing the reverses, so when the camera's on me and all you can see is Matt's shoulders, mm. traditionally it would be a stand-in. Mm, yeah. But no, Matt, and, uh, Matt very kindly said no, he would do that too. And then I found out why. It's because he's got this twinkle in his eye. Oh, yeah. So when he's talking to me and I'm trying to be very serious, <laughs> uh, he's trying to make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> and he, uh, he'd walk past my trailer and he'd go, Morning, Sigh! Yeah. And I... Hate being called Sigh. I remember. Yeah, I hate. I don't yeah. know why. It's a Freud will tell you why. I have no idea. Uh, but it was Matt Smith and the Doctor, so I had to, you know. I saw, absolutely. So, so it's fine. <laughs> you, you got. I mean, for you know, for fans all over the world, because Doctor Who is worldwide. Mm -hmm. It is global. You got probably one of the most iconic closers of all time ever written. I mean, I, I still get goosebumps when I watch your episode. When I read the script and I saw that, mm. uh, and I read that, uh, I turned the page again. Okay. Because I couldn't believe that Moffat had written something for me. To close. Yeah. To close, not only the episode, but that was the actual last episode of the series. Yes. So I knew that it would be quite significant. Okay, so the, um, the closing lines, can you still do? Do it. Please. Can you? <laughs> because on. it's right there on that picture. Yes, okay. Give the... I mean, so we're, Australia and everywhere. So we're this. recording this in 2022. So it'll be out in 2023. And I filmed this in 2011. <laughs> so, okay. And it was only... All right, okay. Let's see if I can... Uh, but you're a fool, Doctor. It's all still waiting for you. The fields of Trenzalore, the four of the eleventh, and the question. The first question that must never been answered. Hidden in plain sight. The question you've been running from all your life. Doctor Who. Doctor Who. Doctor Who! Yes! <laughs> I've got goosebumps! Oh, I can't believe I got that through there. I can't believe you yeah. did that. Look at that. Oh, dear. <laughs> That's like a dream. Right, um, yeah, well, mesmerised by that. Well, then. Oh, my days. Right. So, Simon, we've yes. done, we've gone through all of Dorian. And, um, I mean, look, I, the, the stuff that you've got here, you, you've got your books out as well. You, I mean, Zy, um let Zygons be Zygons. Yes, that's the uh, third of the three. Basically, it came around because the wonders and the spin-offs from Doctor Who is, of course, I got invited on all these sci-fi uh, conventions. You never stop. You travel the world constantly. And it, well, yeah. and, and, uh, and it was amazing. And um, uh, people started asking, do you have an autobiography? And I thought, well, who would want an autobiography of me? You know, I'm, I'm just this blob 
that, that <laughs> bounces around. No, you are <laughs> not. You literally play, you play yourself down as if, like, you are phenomenal. You are so talented. talented. Yeah, like... No, no. Uh, anyway, people are asking how an autobiography. And then, as you know, at these conventions, we do panels mm. where we're interviewed rather like you're all interviewing me now. Uh, and people would ask questions. And a couple of times in America, I turned up and the uh, and visual leader, as they call him in America, um, didn't turn up. So I'm just pushed onto this empty stage, and I'm not a stand-up comic. Mm. Uh, I am. I'm, I'm happy a sit-down one. <laughs> I'm a sit-down comic. <laughs> but no, I I I have difficulty actually telling jokes, but I can be funny, mm. and I know that. So that I know my limitations. <laughs> anyway, so it happened a couple of times, which was a bit awkward. I felt awkward, so I've um, put together some PowerPoint presentations. Okay. It looks a bit like this banner, really. But, and so, if, uh, so images click over, click over. Mm -hmm. And those images are a bit like the interview, and that tells me, oh, I'll talk about it, this bit next. And instead of uh, talking, uh, doing a proper autobiography, you know, I was born on the 25th and then, then you know, uh, uh, it's anecdotes mm -hmm. of things that have happened in my life that demonstrate something that somebody else is sort of complaining about. Anyway, uh, I called it my Dalek has a puncture because I to, to have to have a, a, do, a Doctor Who theme. Uh, and uh, whilst on tour doing uh, doing that, uh, Dan Grubb from Fantastic Books Publishing, thank you, Dan, uh, uh, came to the show in Groomsby of all places. And on the back of his programme, he drew me up a, a sort of a draft contract. He said, "You've got to put this into book form." Wow! Oh. And of course, because I talk for weeks at a time um, it, it's spread over three books so there's my Dalek as a puncture does cover things about my life before I got off a Dorian then my Dalek has another puncture highlights my limited imagination it's gone down um, again <laughs> yes um, but it's what how things should change uh, oh, since Dorian and uh, let Zygons be Zygons is really highlighting things that other people have mention to me, because they say, you know when you mention dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Well, a similar thing happened to me. Oh. Or then some other people come up and ask, you know, ask me questions. I have become an agony uncle. I love it. I'm and in one of them, aren't I? <laughs> you are. I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in one of the books. Well, because I do a few thank yous. Okay. That's I do nice. a few, because uh, regardless of what uh, some may say, I perfectly accept that, um, okay, I do accept I might have what some people call a degree of talent. But at the end of the day, success is luck. And I've had a huge dollop of it uh, as, as I go through. And one of the bits of luck is meeting wonderful people. Doing Panto with, um, with Reese mm -hmm. was fantastic because in 2009, for reasons that are explained in uh, the first book, I was attacked. And that's why I go around on a mobility scooter. Right. Uh, and uh, and since 2009, there was more difficulty getting a panto. Prior to that, it was every year, mm -hmm. right? Um, because uh, some producers don't have the imagination of what could be done. But as soon as Dorian saw me, saw the scooter, uh, Reese knew exactly the potential. Mm -hmm. So I, so I've got a public yeah. thank yeah. you. Oh, oh that's that, nice. About plus, we're, we're each as balmy as the other. We are. And uh, we, we each yeah. clicked. So we did. We the, the moment we met, um, I'd, I, I mean, even, even a, you know, obviously I'd, I'd seen Doctor Who and everything, but the there was just something that gelled between me and you, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. um, Simon and I did Cinderella together, and we were the ugly sisters. Um, <laughs> and I'd seen I'd seen Cy. He hates being called Cy, <laughs> as we already know. <laughs> I'd seen Simon on this mobility scooter, and just thought. This is brilliant, yeah. brilliant. Mm. So we dressed the mobility scooter up. Um, Simon was, was there in a full frock, biggest boobs you've ever seen in your life. 10 foot wig. And that's before I put before the frock on. Before he put the frock on. Me behind him, and I, we, we, we scooted onto the stage and we did um, a Titanic pose, didn't we? So I was yes. singing My Heart Will Go On, with oh, a yeah. bit of Celine yeah. Dion. Yeah. And our opening lines were, I'm Beryl. And I'm Cheryl. And we're identical twins. twins. <laughs> Even our mother can't tell us apart. No. <laughs> Me, Simon, 
<laughs> me, <laughs> identical. Identical to you. And every time the mother came on, couldn't tell us apart at all. Yeah. But we had ten glorious weeks. Too, it was, it we? was, it was good fun. So, so that's why we get to mention. But I, I must also mention uh, Dudley Rogers, who your other panto a, sister, has also been. A, he was my first pantomime sister. Yeah. And uh, and he I'm actually helped. He, mm. he actually because <laughs> he's he, he's ancient. He won't mind me saying that, but. Uh, uh, he's he's well into his seventies and he can still do the splits. Oh wow! Right, at, uh, horizontally, not vertically. Right. You can do them, can't you? Yeah, of Come on! <laughs> I don't think you could do it in that frock. Not in that, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, but um, but uh, anyway, so I want to say thank you to Dudley because he taught me more about timing and energy, mm. and that's what performance is. That's what makes it so tiring. It's funny that we just <laughs> <laughs> right. We'll start again. In a second, do you want to go straight into Harry Potter? Yes. Right, we'll start again now. Okay. Right, so we spoke about Pantol, and I'm interested in Harry Potter. So tell us a bit about that. Well, like Doctor Who, mm -hmm. uh, I just got a phone call to say uh, that I got an audition. Uh, and it was the following day. So this was about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, mm -hmm. and I got an audition at 10 o'clock in the morning. Wow. Yeah. No so pressure. this would have been around the year 2000. Okay. Uh, and I was one of 20 people they saw to be the fat fry of Hufflepuff House. Uh, and then uh, they whittled us down to 13. Then they whittled us down to 7. Then they whittled us down to, <laughs> <laughs> to 3. Uh, wow. and, uh, and then the, the, the last three, the, the, the three of us got to see um, the big... Powerful people, mm -hmm. and I, I then became the chosen one. And by which time, because it takes so long, it was about bloody time. <laughs> well, that's that's <laughs> Rather so than long. the excitement of, but this was ten years before Doctor Who. Oh, oh yeah. right. and okay. um, uh, and uh, it was the biggest thing to be associated with at the time, mm -hmm. and it was very, very exciting. I mm. have to admit, and it was my first experience of being chased by the paparazzi. <laughs> they were looking for someone. <laughs> <laughs> to they could secrete inside, <laughs> whereas you can imagine you, know, you run like a road runner. Wouldn't you? I would <laughs> roll speeding down Oxford Street in London. And, and Catch and, and, me if I tried to sneak in anywhere. <laughs> I'd be like some baby elephant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so I so I had to decline their kind offer, uh, but it was but at the same time there was part of me thinking, oh wow, I've been chased. I mean, this is Hollywood. Yeah. This is J.K. Rowling. Oh no, it was a, it was a fantastic time. Um, uh, I learnt an awful lot. Oh. It was scary as well as fun, uh, and the, the four main ghosts. We were all filmed in a huge warehouse type, like an aircraft. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we were hanging 20 feet off the floor. And we had blue and green screens. So that's so oh, wow. that shows how long ago. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it was good fun. Uh, and um, our frocks were wonderful. Yes. Extremely heavy. Mm. But you couldn't sit down in them. You couldn't. The outfit. No, so they, they gave us lean twos, mm. which didn't really work. Because what happened was got huge muscle tension on yeah. your thighs yeah. so I couldn't walk <laughs> uh, do you know what? I, I rang you and for anybody who has been to the, the Warner Brothers tour your yeah. outfit is, is in there yeah. right? it's actually in the grand hall I mean the whole thing was very very exciting we were the production photographer was Annie Leibovitz so I can say that. and because it's Annie Leibovitz the, the, the pictures got into Vanity Fair so yeah. I was in Vanity Fair well, this it, is worldwide fame isn't yeah, it and, yeah. um, and then we came to the premiere and everything we did was cut out <laughs> and I I, cling, <laughs> I literally cling on for about five seconds. <laughs> yeah, I mean it. Oh yeah, I'm honest. And in fact, my name in the credits, they go up very slowly. So my name in the credits are on screen longer than I am. But it's a brilliant, uh, brilliant contract. And I have to thank mm. J.K. Rowling. Wonderful experience. I really hope that some of the stuff we did, because we worked with Rick Mayle. I was just about to say that. In the book, Rick Mayle's character is so big. He's the poltergeist. I always know when I'm talking to Harry Potter fans, yeah. whether they've read the book. Yeah. Or not. Because if I talk about the death day party, and uh, and Peeves the poltergeist, yeah. and their eyes glaze yeah. over, that means they only know the film. Yes. Yeah. And yet... <laughs> I'm sorry if this sounds offensive, but not having Peeves is like having the Bible without Jesus. No, I get that. Because but, but the there, books, is, there is talk about putting him back in, though, isn't there? There's talk about being an extended 
director's cut right. and for some anniversary, because they've just had their anniversary, haven't they? Yeah. Mine's gone wrong, but, um, but yeah, th there's talk, and especially because, you know, Rick Mayer was one of the greatest comedians yeah. that this world has ever known. Yes. And I think it'd be a lovely tribute for him, mm. you know, oh, since it, we've it lost him, be. to put him back in. Oh, yeah. uh, and uh, that, that's also for the others. And on a personal basis, uh, see, what happened was, we had to literally hang around for John Cleese, who mm. was nearly head to snick. Yeah. But at the time, he was filming his queue in Bond. And at the time, wow. Bond had more pulling power. I pulling power. Yeah. So we had to wait for him, which is very nice. So what turned out that what was originally a two week contract turned out to be five. Okay. So thank you very much, John Cleese. Nice. Uh, uh, but in between, we rehearsed little scenes with Rick Mail and did all sorts of the wow. song. Uh, and, and of course, he was very serious about what we rehearsed. Mm. But when we came to film it, it did <laughs> <laughs> And of course, I want to see us all going, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it, was, it was really, really good. And I made good friends uh, with a number of the ghosts. But... Uh, your, your career has just gone through so many different. Well, it's ups and downs, twists, isn't it? Turns I mean, and ups and downs. And your I mean, bubble gets pricked. You say, "So I'm doing Harry Potter." There we go. Painting right. me blue. And the next job, uh, uh, I'm touring a play where <laughs> nine times out of ten we bunked up in a barn. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. Everybody thinks it's all glitz and glamour, but there is that side. As you say about yeah. you know the small rooms and no you take you, you take you take what you can I I'd, I'd love to do more stage work yeah. but have film money mm. Mm. God, yeah that'd be nice. but uh, but no it's uh, you take what you can um, I mean there are those who are able to sort of plot a sort of proper yeah. sort and of career you've got you've got I mean this is this is your new one at the moment isn't well at it? the moment yes so. at the moment I'm doing uh, the you handsome boy yeah. look at you. Doctor Who, before Doctor Who, mm -hmm. I had to audition for everything. Right. Whether it was for half a day on a corporate video mm -hmm. or for a six month tour, absolutely everything. And uh, and this is mainly because people thought I was just a simpleton. Right? <laughs> and, uh, uh, and uh, but then after Doctor Who, for a good six years, I just got asked to do things. Yeah. How nice. And it is, it's just the relief mm. of having. Uh, Covid <laughs> buggered that up yeah. because most of my contacts either died or retired during Covid. So and then some ones, of us are still here. Yeah, no. Well, no, it's two, no, I, two I, are still here. I, I joke about it, but it is actually very sad. And lots of people who I built a lovely working relationship and friendship with yeah. uh, just are no longer here. Sad, yeah. uh, and so it's sort of for me and many others, it's sort of starting out all over again. But I still get to ask it. And this Hawk Chronicles, uh, the Adventures of Kate Hawk. It's an American production. Okay, uh, and it's a radio drama. Mm. That's what I call it. But it's done on the internet. Nice. And I was asked. Uh, this producer of it came to an event, uh, a Harry Potter event, as it happens. In I can't remember where it was now, but uh, Mer it's in Maryland, and um, just all that. Just, just, Literally, just, I'm, I'm in just, awe just here. Just I'm in awe because I'm look, he's just I, so uh, chilled yeah. and but, just relaxed. Uh, and... Uh, anyway, he asked me if I would be a guest appearance. They wanted an MI6 officer in this American production, and basically the story is sort of set in the future, mm. and it's all to do with secret agents and all that sort of stuff. And so I said, yeah. Uh, I mean, so they asked me, and that was episode 103. Anyway, it's now, I've just recorded 203. Really? 100 episodes? Wow, wow my days. Listen, I, I, I could just talk to you forever. You know how I feel about you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm going to sit and squeeze your TARDIS now, oh. as the actress said to the <laughs> bishop. <laughs> Have a squeeze. Yeah. There we are. Simon, give me a hug. I love oh. you. I adore you. You're an amazing, amazing man. <laughs> Um, hope you've enjoyed that episode, and we're going to be back with you very soon. You look gorgeous Thank as ever. Thank you very much. I love it that you're next to me. I love it that I'm next to you too. Bless you. <laughs> Simon, safe journey home, and we'll Thanks see you so again on Creatives on the Couch. See you very soon. Bye for now. <laughs>